What's cooking? I'm Emily from The Book of Voice, and today we are at a spot where I am just as obsessed with its name as I am its cocktail menu. This is Death or Glory in Delray Beach, just off Atlantic, and it's, well, it's five o'clock summer, right? Let's check it out. What's cooking? Joining us today is Daniel Dorr, executive chef of Death or Glory. Thank you so much for having us today. Thanks for coming by. Daniel, can you start by telling us what Death or Glory means? Death or Glory has a couple different uh, meanings to us. Um, traditionally, it was a British cavalry unit, I believe, that uh, that was like their cry, that was their slogan, it was Death or Glory. Um, so historically, it has a meaning like that, but uh, we, we like it, it's a very strong, powerful, it is. You know, very, we're kind of going for it here, so we're not trying to let anybody down. We're, gonna, we're, going, we're going strong, we're going big. The historical inspiration behind the name is so intriguing. Is there anywhere else in Death or Glory where history comes into play? Uh, yeah, the, uh, the building that we're in is an old Delray house turned into cocktail bar, tiki bar, restaurant. And the, uh, the original owner, one of the original owners was a, a man named Falcon. And uh, we think that's a pretty strong name too. We like that name. So we're actually in the Falcon room right now. It's like our party room. And some people think that he might still be uh, hanging out around here. So it's a fun, it's a okay. fun little spot. To, to come in and check out the history of the place. We try and play on it with our cocktails as well. We have a lot of tradition and whether it's pre prohibition style and brought into the, into the modern age. So you had mentioned this concept of bringing the pre-prohibition era to the modern times, which I absolutely love. Can you tell me more about the overall concept of Death or Glory, uh, both food, drink, and atmosphere? Yeah, uh, well, Death or Glory, um, we focus on on the food, obviously. I try and focus on the food as much as I can, but it's a cocktail bar. So the prime time for cocktails was pre-prohibition. Um, everyone wants to talk about how the prohibition time, well, that's when alcohol was legal. That was a, a low point in it. So we're trying to bring that, what was lost through that and lost over time, we're trying to bring that back. Um, and obviously food, we have a, a full restaurant as well. Lots of bar snacks and full on entrees. I pride myself on locally sourced ingredients, whether it be fresh fish, um, getting a fish delivery almost every day, every other day, um, locally sourced ingredients for uh, produce and vegetables. And uh, we have the classic cocktails where you can get your stirred martini or your old fashioned, or if you want to open a beer, we've got that. And uh, a tiki bar, we have a tiki bar in the back for, uh, for our rum bar, for, for tiki drinks. All the fancy garnishes and lots of fun and come as you are. We're welcome to everybody. As casual as you like, or as high class as you like. If you wanna come up in your tuxedo and your gown, I, you'll fit right in. If you show up with flip flops and an unbuttoned tiki shirt, you'll fit right in. It's kind of a place for everybody. Being the executive chef here, I would love to know more about you and where you got your love of cooking. Uh, I've been cooking since a little kid, as a young age, uh, cooking with my grandma. I was telling the story actually the other day about um, Grandma said, "Don't touch that. That's hot." And of course, I had to touch it and uh, learn your lesson that way. You learn once. And uh, she was making onions, some caramelized onions. Still, uh, those were some delicious caramelized onions she made. I remember she used to call them flavor crystals. Those flavor crystals were the onions, and that was that just been cooking as a passion, just as forever and ever and ever. Daniel, besides the two bars, you mentioned that you also have a full restaurant with items ranging from bar bites to full entrees. And these are some of our bar snacks here. Um, this is more of our most popular dishes as far as at the bar. Everyone comes in, you gotta try the Cheeto Spice chickpeas. Everyone talks about them. And the maple, bacon, Brussels sprouts. Again, we have some vegan options as well, lots of vegan and vegetarian options. You can get the Brussels sprouts without bacon, although it's highly recommended with bacon. And this is our most popular stuff that's for bar snacks at the bar. Gotta get the bacon down at the bottom. Gotta get every, oh, okay, that's right. Oh, nice. yeah, all it's right. all over the place. All right, gotta get it all in one. Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh. To be honest with you, I don't really like Brussels sprouts typically, but I would eat this entire bowl. The, these are amazing. That's the idea. <laughs> I'd like for you to eat the whole bowl. Um, very simple. It's uh, only five ingredients. Brussels sprouts, applewood smoked bacon, maple syrup, whiskey, and mulled down sea salt. 
So, so far everything you've brought out is so delicious. And what I love is that you mentioned these chickpeas are actually vegan. So do you have other menu items that are vegan as well? We do, we have uh, some entrees and more bar snacks. Uh, here we have vegan crab cake sliders with uh, old bay aioli and some arugula and fresh lemon. And instead of crab, we use jackfruit, which is, it takes on a lot of flavor wherever you make it. Uh, again, like I said, we change our menu quite a bit. Um, so right now, our rendition of vegan crab cake sliders with um, onions and peppers and seaweed and Old Bay. So I see a sauce on here, and I know you can't use mayonnaise if it's vegan, so what is it? This is true. Um, it's actually made with uh, eggless mayonnaise. Okay. So instead of real mayonnaise, again, this is an Old Bay aioli, so Old Bay spice with crab cake and I like the idea of a little fresh lemon juice on there, but eggless mayonnaise. So instead of using eggs to make aioli, uh, we can use aquafaba, which is bean water, okay. um, and use that as an egg substitute. And we do that at the bar as well. Um, a lot of classic cocktails call for an egg white, and we have vegan cocktails available as well. Not bad for Jack. Honestly, if you like, unless you told me this was vegan, I would have no idea. The texture that you get from a traditional crab cake is 100% here. I uh, had some family in town from uh, Boston, Massachusetts area the other day, and I gave them one. I didn't tell them it was jackfruit, and they were like, that was really good. I really liked that. I'm like, oh yeah, it's vegan, by the way. They're like, really? I didn't yeah. no idea, so. No, it's brilliant. I was like, so you've walked me through your most popular bar bites. Would you consider this one of your most popular entrees? This is definitely one of the favorites on there. Um, it's a, a pan-roasted airline chicken breast with fingerling potatoes and a very rich juniper and lemon demi-gloss, which is like a roasted stock, and a fresh salad as well. It's a shaved fennel and orange salad with pickled Fresno peppers and contro soaked raisins, which is like a triple sec. A little orange flavor, and I've got an orange and a, a lemon juniper demi gloss. So, more orange, a couple layers of orange, a couple layers of citrus, a couple different kinds of vinegar, and I love vinegar. So, a little fresh salad, so fresh and rich, and roasted chicken breast. I need the fingerling. I need to get the peppers because I love spicy. Yeah, get some of the peppers so and the oranges is... with the chicken, and then you can do the potato afterwards. That's what I like. You know, chicken salad. Potato. Potato. All right. Okay. I love the notes of orange you have all the way through. You can have it like it's, you taste it in the glaze. You taste it with the slices of orange. But I love the play on savory, sweet, vinegary. Mm -hmm. That is really fun. I've got a lot of uh, some juniper in the sauce as well, just kind of like with uh, what you're gonna smell, what you're gonna taste in gin. Mm. And, uh, and I love that with citrus. So that was kind of the inspiration behind it. I'm loving this whole cocktail to menu concept because with the Brussels sprouts you put whiskey. Yeah. Now you got Cointreau and some juniper, mm -hmm. so gin you play, you play with so, orange, you get to play off a of gin. So I'm trying to, it's a lot of options for, for pairing. And yeah. we, we encourage that, of course. That's awesome. So to finish here, um, one of our most Dishes I'm most proud of is the fact that we get locally sourced fish um, living right next to the ocean. I can't not take advantage of the fact that we can get delicious fish right off out of our neighborhood. Right now, it comes from a fisherman out of Boca Raton, and I've been working with him on and off for about nine years now, so we've got a good reputation to report. Uh, nature's bounty right here. So locally spear hogfish uh, with a celeriac mashed potato, which is celery root. A little bit of notes of celery and a herrick which are baby green beans, baby French green beans, uh, blistered heirloom cherry tomatoes with garlic, and a muscatel vinegar pan sauce. It's a very sweet vinegar, it's a little sweet and buttery finish on some delicious, delicate hogfish. Totally fun. Beside 
me now is David, General Manager of Death or Glory, to tell us even more about this really special spot. Thank you for taking time out to be with us today. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure. So Daniel had walked us through um, a lot of the food menu, and I was kind of hoping you could tell me more about your bar menu, and he had mentioned you have two bars. We do, absolutely. Um, as far as our cocktail menus, we separate it into two different categories. So we have our signature drinks, which are what myself and the bar staff collaborate on, and then we have our classic cocktails, which pays homage to the drinks that have gotten us to where we are today in cocktail culture. Some of the favorites what we have in front of us are the Old Fashioned and the Vesper, which really highlight uh, spirit forward and the stirred technique. Um, regarding the bars, we have our, our main bar inside. There's about 16 seats. And then outside, we have this really special hideaway. Um, it's our tiki bar, basically. It's really, really focused on uh, rums from around the world, tiki culture, tiki cocktails as well. So we certainly take pride in that. And we have a couple resident sort of tiki mixologists on, on staff that, that really champion that. Oh, that's awesome. Being that you're just one block north of Atlantic, a lot of people in this area are looking for a really good happy hour spot. Does Death or Glory feature that? We certainly do. Actually, I think our, our happy hour is pretty dynamic. We open at four every day, and happy hour runs from four to seven. So in addition to $6 snacks and small plates, we also feature $6 wines by the glass, $1 off of all of our beers, and then we have a selection which is rotating of $6 classic cocktails, as well as all of our house spirits available at $6 as well. And uh, in addition to that, our kitchen's open late every single day. So we, okay. we stay open till two, seven days a week, no matter what. And you can come get a bite of food here uh, till at least 1.30 every single night. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, just gives, you know, options for late night, whether it be the, the industry, uh, the industry folk that get out of work that, that come by or, or somebody that just has a hanger in late at night, we're, we're here for you. Death or Glory is more than just a strong name. It is an intriguing and versatile atmosphere. From exquisitely crafted signature cocktails at the main bar, rums from around the world at the Tiki Bar, and a food menu with several vegan options, there's truly something for everyone. Till next time.